Okay, so we will begin with prayer now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, and all the holy angels and saints, Saint Louis, and all the holy angels and saints, we praise you, God. We adore you. We tell you that we're sorry for our sins, and we ask your forgiveness of our sins. We also pray in thanksgiving uh, to you for all of your many blessings, for yourself especially, for our family and families, um, and for all your beautiful creation. We pray um, in a special way uh, today for uh, the Ukraine and for the protection of uh, all the people there, uh, including their uh, president, um, who is acting heroically. And we pray uh, for peace uh, in Ukraine and peace in the world. And um, we just lift all of our intentions up, uh, all of our loved ones. And um, we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name, as we pray together, asking our Blessed Mother's powerful intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to uh, bless our speaker tonight, to bless all who are uh, watching this presentation and all who will watch it um, later on. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it is my uh, pleasure to introduce to you um, this evening our, our presenter for the February 2022 edition of the Truth, Beauty, and Goodness Evangelization Speaker Series. And our speaker is Lou Kratz. Uh, Lou is a, a lot of people, it's, it's a cliche, well, you know, uh, doesn't take a rocket scientist, or I'm no rocket scientist, Lou's a rocket scientist. <laughs> so, Lou is a retired aerospace executive and a member of Holy Name of Jesus Parish in Harrisburg. Um, he is a member of the National Shrine 1909 Society, and I'm sure that he will expl be explaining as part of his presentation tonight the significance of that. Uh, I'm sure most of us, but maybe not all of us, have been uh, to the uh, National Shrine. My wife and I have some uh, an interesting story or two um, about the National Shrine. My dad was being inducted into Catholic University's Sports Hall of Fame there some number of years ago, and our eldest son was uh, lost uh, after Mass. We were getting ready to go home, and of course it opens up onto the street there, and for about 20 minutes we couldn't find him so we had a bunch of family, right? It was one of those deals. We had a bunch of family there for my dad's induction. We'd gone to mass and everybody thought that Stephen was with somebody else. Stephen is now 22 years old. Thanks be to God. Uh, but um, I can't imagine St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother uh, being missing the Christ child for three days. We were missing Stephen for like 20 minutes. And it was the most terrifying 20 minutes of our lives. Um, and uh, luckily, a, a friend from England of one of my cousins uh, found our son staring up at one of the, the Blessed Mother statues there in the downstairs part of the shrine. And, uh, you know, of course, first it was pure relief and hugs and, and tears. And then it was, don't ever do that to us again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in any case, but Lou is going to be speaking about the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. He and his wife, Denise, are parents of five adult children and grandparents to 11 grandchildren. Uh, Mr. Kratz holds uh, a BA and an MA in economics from Georgetown University. Uh, and um, Lou has a real heart. I've gotten to know Lou over, I'm not sure how long it's been, Lou, probably more than a year now, a year and a half. And um, 
Lou has a real heart for evangelization, has done a lot um, in terms of St. Paul Street evangelization, and uh, just a uh, great love of the church, and, and we so appreciate having him here and um, uh, speaking on this topic tonight. So his presentation will discuss the history of the National Shrine in Washington, D.C., including the consecration of the United States to our Blessed Mother under the title of the Immaculate Conception. By the way, that is why the Immaculate Conception, not all, there's like 10 solemnities, roughly, I can have that off by one or two, on the universal church calendar. In this country, six of them are holy days of obligation. The, the, on most of them, the Vatican leaves it up to the bishops' conferences in the different countries, which ones to make, which solemnities to make as days of obligation. And so there's six in this country, which is actually more than most countries that are obligatory. But uh, the reason for the Immaculate Conception, um, that one, sometimes with, with many of them, if they fall on a Monday or a Saturday, they're still solemnities, but no longer days of obligation. However, there are two that are always days of obligation um, in this country. One is Christmas, the Nativity of Our Lord, and the other is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Why, you ask? I'm glad you asked. The reason is because uh, it is under that title that uh, Our Lady is the patroness of the United States. So that is always, even if it falls on a Sunday, or on a, excuse me, on a, on a Saturday or a Monday, it's still an obligatory day in the United States. So uh, the consecration of the U.S. to our Blessed Mother, the initial planning for the shrine and laying of the cornerstone, completion of construction following World War II, and completion of the Trinity Dome in 2014. And this presentation also will provide a brief summary of the 1909 Society. The title is Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. And without uh, further flapping of my gums, I introduce to you Lou Kratz. Take it away, Lou, and thank you. Well, thank you, Jim, and thank you all for joining us tonight. If you give me just a couple seconds, I'm going to share my screen, and um, I have a few PowerPoint presentations to go through. So uh, the first thing I'd like to point out, Jim mentioned... Uh, the 1909 Society. Uh, I have been a member for five years. Uh, I am an ambassador for the 1909 Society, and that's a volunteer position that um, allows me to give presentations like this. Uh, the second thing you'll note on this, this cover chart uh, is the reference to America's Catholic Church, and um, the reason it's referred to as the National Shrine is we are, we are in fact the National Shrine, and uh, we'll go through the history of how we got there. Um, it's actually pretty fascinating uh, when you look at where we started and then uh, the time frame from the beginning of the shrine to, uh, to where we are today. So with no further ado, let me just give you a quick summary up front. Uh, Jim mentioned this, uh, our Blessed Mother is the patroness of the United States, and that has been true since 1792, which um, we'll go into that in a little more detail, but that just amazes me when you look at the timeline of the nation. Uh, we're going to talk a lot tonight about the role of the clergy and the bishops and the archbishops. Um, they got to do cool things like preside over masses and, and dedications, but the shrine was built. The muscle and the funding behind the national shrine was from everyday Catholics, and it truly was a national effort, particularly after World War II, to, uh, to finish the shrine construction. Um, I lived in Washington for over 50 years. And so Irene, I'm glad to hear your son is down there now. Good for you. I'm happy to be here in central Pennsylvania. Uh, I love it here. Um, but I went to many events, many masses, graduations uh, at the National Shrine. And I never realized in those 50 years that it really operated as a pilgrim site, uh, not, as a, not as a normal parish. Um, and because of that, right, their income was a little bit disrupted during the COVID-19. The, the constraints in Washington, D.C. were particularly rough uh, in 2019 and uh, 2020, um, and they had to stop the pilgrim uh, trips. Uh, those have restarted, 
and we'll talk a little bit about that later in the uh, in the presentation. And then the final point I would leave you with that the, the an entire staff, Monsignor Rossi and his entire, both the clergy and the professional staff there, uh, have always struck me as warm, inviting, welcoming. So they really do create an extremely good environment to honor our Blessed Mother. And, and with that, let me go into the details, a little more details of the presentation. As, as Jim mentioned, I will talk a little bit about the beginnings and then the history of the shrine itself um, in terms of the, the construction. Very short about the 1909 Society. And then uh, I'll be available for any questions. So um, let's start in 1792. Um, John Carroll, the Bishop of Baltimore, consecrated the United States under the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and that was 1792. Um, that was subsequently reiterated by the Seventh Provin Provincial Council of Baltimore uh, with a slight change to the title, Virgin Mary Conceived Without Sin in 1847. The Provincial Councils recommended that to Pope Pius IX, and he agreed, accepted, and approved that recommendation also in 1847. And, and what's really interesting about that, two things from, from my perspective. Um, first, when you, when you think through the birth of our country, the, the Constitution of the United States was written in about 19, uh, 1787, uh, ratified in 88. It went into effect in March of 1889, 1789. So within three years, of the beginning of what we now recognize as the United States, John Carroll committed this country to our Blessed Mother. And, and I just find that absolutely fascinating. You know, not a, a blip, right, in terms of time. And then 50 years later, right, that's reiterated and re-emphasized. So you see, there's no ambiguity in terms of our leadership and our commitment to our Blessed Mother as a nation and as, as the Catholic community here in the United States. The shrine itself um, actually uh, is housed on the, the what, what once was the property of the Catholic University of America. Uh, Bishop Shannon uh, proposed the construction of the National Shrine to Pope Pius in 1913. The Board of Trustees of, of Catholic donated the land for the National Shrine and um, the, the uh, blessing of the land um, was provided by Archbishop Giovanni, the apostolic delegate at the time, in May of 1920. Excavation began right after that in August, and um, Cardinal Gibbons, actually from Archbishop of Baltimore, blessed the foundation stone in September of 1920. And, and for those of you who are familiar with the Washington area, the Archbishop of Baltimore may sound interesting. Um, there was no Archdiocese of Washington in 1920. The Archdiocese of Washington actually was initiated in 1939. Um, so we were part of the Baltimore structure at that time. Um, and we didn't have our own freestanding Archbishop uh, until a few years after that, 1947, when uh, uh, Archbishop Boyle was was appointed by the Pope. So that was a, a little history there. And it's interesting from Washington perspective because now you view the Archdiocese of Washington, right? It's, it's kind of much bigger than Baltimore at this point, but it was not always that way historically. So it's, it's kind of interesting, fun fact to know and tell. Um, the Foundation Stone event itself was, was um, oh, I went, I went too far. Sorry about that. Um, the Venetian Stone itself, uh, the event was pretty impressive. Uh, 69 uh, dignitaries from the clergy uh, across from across the United States, 25 international dignitaries, um, US dignitaries and honored guests. And, and I'm gonna talk about Abe uh, Abilene uh, later. Um, he was he is honored as the founder of 1909. So uh, we'll we'll go through a little bit of that history. Uh, the International Federation of Catholic Alumni and Catholic Women and the Knights of Columbus 
um, represented the lay laity at the time. And again, um, the dignitaries being there were great. They were all from all over um, you know, Europe, Central Asia, Central America, South America, and Japan. Um, the US dignitaries uh, included the secretary, the assistant secretary of state, the associate justices from the Supreme Court, the military chiefs of staff, and, and um, at that level. And I bring that up today because we're in such a different time, right? In 1920, you had a, a pretty significant commitment by the nation uh, and they recognized how important this was. Um, the last point I'll leave you with on this chart, the, the College of uh, St. College High School of St. John in, in Washington, D.C. was formed just ahead of the groundbreaking for the National Shrine. And so they invited the newly formed Corps of Cadets. Um, and again, I am from Washington. I graduated from Our Lady of Good Counsel High School. And uh, St. John's is actually our arch rival uh, back then. So it's interesting to see that they were at the, uh, the dedication of the laying the foundation stone for me personally. Um, from that point, the, the shrine actually, the construction went pretty fast. And uh, we celebrated our first public mass in April of 24. Uh, the chapel to Our Lady of Lords was dedicated in 1931. There was a little break for the depression and World War II. Uh, and then Archbishop O'Boyle um, blessed the resumption of the work in November of 1954. Um, Cardinal Spellman uh, dedicate, dedicated the upper church in November of 1959, and the Trinity Dome, as, as uh, Jim mentioned, was completed in 2017. A, a couple of interesting points about the, the timeline. Uh, first, that first Mass uh, in April of 24, that was actually Easter Sunday uh, in April of 1924. 3,000 people attended the, the initial Mass. And um, they still have the scaffolding up in the crypt church. Uh, th that's the bottom church uh, because they were still wrapping up the construction. The chapel to Our Lady of Lords was the first chapel, first Marian chapel built outside of the crypt church. So it is on the same, uh, the upper level of, of the upper church. In the resumption of work in November of 54, that was actually the centurion celebration of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. So 100 years after we committed to that, that dogma, uh, we restarted the work on the National Shrine. So pretty impressive. And then the Trinity Dome, and I'm going to ask everyone to be a little patient with me here. There's a couple of points in here that you get kind of emotional about. Um, the Trinity Dome was in my adult lifetime. Uh, and so we had an opportunity to uh, to support that. And, and I tell you, it was a great honor uh, to be able to put a roof on Mary's house. I mean, that's basically what we did. And um, it's fantastic. 24 tons of Venetian glass. And you could tell from the timeline, when they laid that last piece of glass in the Trinity Dome, you're about 104 years from, from the commitment to building the shrine to we really are now fully complete. Um, today, and, and Irene, I'm, I'm thrilled that your son, your son can actually see the shrine from his, his window. Uh, it is the largest Christian church in the United States, the tallest habitable building in Washington, D.C., uh, 81 Marian chapels. And those chapels reflect the various titles of our Blessed Mother, as well as all the diverse diversity of our national Catholic community here in the United States. And as I mentioned, we, we, we have about a million visitors per year. That was pre-COVID. Um, those restrictions have been lifted now. And so the, the visitors are coming back and, and the, the shrine is open for uh, pilgrims. A couple of uh, very important dignitary uh, visitors include, in, are included here. Um, Mother Teresa visited in 1972. Pope John Paul II conferred the title of Basilica in, in October. Um, he was the first Pope to actually visit the National Shrine. Pope Benedict um, conferred the Papal Rose during his visit in 2008. And Pope Francis um, celebrated Mass in September of 2014 in his visit to the United States. 
and he actually canonized uh, Juno uh, Sarah, Juno Pero Sarah. Uh, that was the first saint canonized in the United States of America. So that was a fantastic day uh, at the shrine. Um, the 1909 Society, I've made a couple references to this. It was actually formed in memory of Abbe Abilene's founding gift of $1,000. He was actually ahead of the papal approval in 1909. That's why it's referred to as the 1909 Society. Uh, it's about 500 uh, people uh, devoted and, and friends of the National Shrine. And there's various membership opportunities available. Um, it's on an annual basis. Um, it's, it's actually very rewarding because you get direct mail uh, from the shrine for a number of items, which I'll talk about actually on our next uh, chart. And you're probably wondering, right, how do you engage with the shrine? Uh, that's all the way down in Washington, D.C., and, and we're here in beautiful central Pennsylvania. Um, and, and I have three suggestions. Uh, first, you know, there, we, we are open now for pilgrimages, um, and the diocese used to sponsor pilgrimages to the shrine. We haven't recently, but the Knights of Columbus at the Holy Name of Jesus are sponsoring a pilgrim to the pilgrimage to the shrine on the 23rd of April. That's the Saturday after Easter. So we'll get all the Easter flowers. And uh, if, if you're interested in that, please feel free to contact me. Uh, we'll be publicly announcing that through the bulletin at Holy Name of Jesus here in, in a few weeks. Um, the second way is to actually visit the National Shrine. And um, Irene, I appreciate you taking great notes tonight. Uh, but, but actually, if you go to the Shrine's website, you can take a virtual tour of the Shrine. And it's, it's really cool because you can go at your own pace. <laughs> they don't usher you right along. Um, and the other thing I would, I would note um, on that is it's wonderful for um, things like Christmas cards, Easter cards, um, you know, in the event of the loss of a loved one, um, dedications and memorials, uh, they're very good, very professional staff that runs um, that part of the shrine, and um, the cards and things are just absolutely wonderful. So um, I, I don't do any Christmas shopping now. I would go right to the shrine, and they just take it from there. And then finally, the 1909 Society, um, various levels of membership available to that. Um, that also can be accessed through the Shrine website. And um, it starts at $1,000 a year, again, in honor of Abbey, Abbey, Abilene's uh, gift to, to the Shrine um, and goes from there. And you know what, Jim? Uh, you and I were speaking before, and I said I was very efficient. I think I went through that pretty quick, but I'm more than happy to slow down now. <laughs> Um, let me thank you all for your time this evening, and I'm open to any questions.